Ya, ya. ya. Yeah, good afternoon, dear participants. Uh, uh, today we have a eminent uh, speaker uh, and my own friend, Dr. Saeed Ahmed, and who has done his uh, PhD in pharmacognosy and phytochemistry. And not only that, he is also he has also done his um, uh, uh, bachelor's in Unani pharmacy also. Uh, in, uh, so right now he is uh, working as associate professor in the department of uh, pharmacognosy and phytochemistry <coughs> in the school of pharmaceutical education and research jamia hamdard which has been ranked at number 1 in the nrif ranking in 2017 18 19 and so on he is also the in charge of uh, bioactive natural product laboratory and he has a lot of funded projects from the Department of Science and Technology, then Ayush Department, Ministry, then National Medicinal Plants Board, then uh, Unani uh, Department, then he is also uh, having a number of awards starting from Young Pharmacy Teacher Award up to the achievement awards from various agencies like uh, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, then uh, Society for Ethnopharmacology, then Society for Pharmacognosy. Then he is also the guest editor of Frontiers in Pharmacology as, as exclusively on metabolomics and ethnopharmacology section. And he is also the guest editor for the traditional Indian medicine section also for this international journal. <clears throat> he is also joint secretary of this NISA, that is National Environmental Science Academy and coordinator for Society for Ethnopharmacology India. And recently in February 2020, he has successfully con conducted the 7th International Society for Ethnopharmacology as well as Society for Ethnopharmacology India um, which was a very big hit in this part of uh, India and which was been acclaimed by all the <coughs> scientists all over the world. So today I present you in front of you Dr. Saeed Ahmad who is a renowned uh, person and working for uh, basically the pharmacognosy and phytochemistry especially his uh, favorite topic i mean near to his heart is hptlc and hplc and you should some some of the students i mean those who are there you should visit to his laboratory sometime after this pandemic so you can see that how, what sort of work they are doing and uh, uh, how they are contributing for this development of the growth of this pharmacognosy and phytochemistry thank you said ji so thank you, Dr. Dr. Pramod and uh, Dr. Kalpana and uh, the KLE Society for inviting me to uh, have a presentation on drug discovery impact, metabolomics, and the stability of traditional medicine and herbal drugs. So now mm -hmm. I will uh, share my screen. And before sharing my screen, I would like to uh just uh give you brief uh what i'm going to tell you so since um i am a pharmacognosist so we start with uh, little how why we are uh, going to discuss the herbal drugs and why why we are doing that um, uh, very much emphasize on herbal drugs and uh, and uh, before that, uh, little a uh, few part of Jamia Hamdard I will show you then about herbal drugs and then um, quality and uh, standardization part and some part uh, which um, in fact teachers and students uh, could not understand properly in, in standardization. 
since um, I am a part of uh, Pharmacopoeial Commission also of Ayush, so I will uh, discuss those things which are pupils, many of the, the teachers are reporting in the journals also, and some uh, wrong things, okay? So those things I will discuss that uh, regarding understanding of pharmacopoeial standards. Then um, I will go towards the metabolomics, uh, my favorite topic uh, that is, and, um, and the future of pharmacognosy, that is metabolomics. And then after uh, metabolomics, I will touch upon the stability. So it is approximately more than 100 slides and uh, that we are going to cover uh, in uh, approximately one hour or less than that, 45 to minutes to one hour. And uh, But I assure you that you will enjoy the presentation. So thank you once again. So this is uh, I'm sharing. Um, So a screen, can you allow me to share the screen? Sir, you are already presenter, sir. You have made you a presenter, just you share, sir. Yes, sir, your screen is visible, sir, now. Okay. Hmm. okay. So now you can see all? Yeah, yeah it's clear. So thank you very much and sorry for the interruption because of this technical glitch, okay? <laughs> so, so just I have written that need of metabolomics and, and stability for ensuring the quality of herbal drugs. So here, uh, see this is just some photograph of Jamia Hamdard. We have uh, about nine schools and uh, it is among top 20 uh, universities of India. And uh, we are uh, pharmacy is uh, uh, rank one in NIRF since last three years and before that as well. Yeah. Then the school of pharmacy for the pupils who have never visited uh, Jamia Hamdan. And this is our research block. This is the building in which we are uh, for PhD scholars. And uh, this is our team and then my laboratory. You can see the part of my laboratory here as well. And uh, then we come to like this, why on herbal tracks. Okay. Then uh, herbal drugs and natural products. So many of the things, if we talk about uh, then uh, scientifically and technically, many things are there. But why we are using the herbal drugs, mainly these are cheaper and uh, freely available, well accepted. And in the terms of well accepted, like if... Uh, some medicine comes from uh, like turmeric, then uh, pupils are using tur turmeric, since, turmeric since a long time. They don't have any problem of using turmeric. So like that, we have some ethnopharmacological relevances. And uh, part of daily food habits that, you know, it have synergy right now. Then uh, we have concept of synergy, how these are working. And uh, then even we don't need any sophisticated instruments for preparation. Suppose that if we are getting, I told one medicine from turmeric for Corona, suppose that, okay. Then uh, we can directly use turmeric instead of using that uh, isolated medicine also. So we can make decoction, we can make many things we can you use in any of the way okay so that's why we are much concerned about uh, uh, herbal drugs you know about uh, the discovery of this miracle drug the aspirin okay 
and uh, from salix uh, species and then many of the things of aspirin as uh, in pharmacology its involvement in prostaglandins and now in the cancer also and then john wayne got, got the nobel prize on this do you know also this anko wen eh? so that was aspirin was the first uh, you can say that uh, this uh, allopathic drug came in the market as as a dispen okay then you know this ancovin or vincristine was discovered many many drugs were discovered but i will discuss few just to see give you the glimpse of natural products okay then uh, if we talk about catharanthus roseus vinca rosea was present in madagascar in, in africa and uh, then uh, it is used for diabetes but not for the cancer okay but in the world war two some people from eli lily and some people from uh, canada visited for their help in madagascar then they found that people are using this vincarusia uh, as a remedy for the diabetes they took it and tested in their laboratories in eli lily as well as in, in canada okay for diabetes but they did not found any promising di- anti diabetic activity but what was that they did some toxicity studies also and in toxicity studies they they found lymphocytopenic activity and uh, even that was not not noted by eli lily person but noted by that canadian guy and he was presenting his paper in new york somewhere in 1958 then that elaile people were sitting there and they found that this is having lymphocytopenic activity and that means it can be used in leukemia rather later on it was then the activity and fda approved in 1961 then again um, as per uh, national cancer institute uh, united states and uh, nih they tested many of the plants for the cancer and out of that they found this taxol from uh, this taxus baketa and you know this thing taxol contains uh, about 11 yeah 11 chiral centers and if you see the uh, number of uh, this uh, isomers it will come out to 2048 isomers so, so and one is active and the active one that means 100% stereo selective compound is coming from the plant with 100% yield and if you want to synthesize them so how how far we are in synthetic chemistry so synthesize this molecule similarly artemisinin Um, uh, uh, just uh, before few years in 2015 that discoverer of artemisinin got the nobel prize eh? so many compounds are there uh, which uh, shows that uh, how important these natural products are and uh, how we are using them so if we talk about um, quality of herbal drugs and natural products so natural products are used in two form in the medicine one is modern which is well characterized and what is that either we are using fractions right now the just we have planned and even not something approved in the market but still it is uh, from the indian government it is approved to use the phytopharmaceutical otherwise we are using some isomeric mixture like silicon silicristin like silic, uh, like in the form of silymarine we are using some other drugs also in the market otherwise we are using isolated compound in the form of modern medicine or otherwise we are using traditional medicine in india as ism or ayush medicine okay and then uh, what else we can use from these herbals that is botanicals 
extracts their juices and like nutraceuticals and many other things and um, so 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 the quality of these things matters like uh, i i told you that in modern each and everything is well collect- characterized and have at their quality but in traditional medicine when we are using these drugs so because of loose regulations we can say in india and abroad as well as these natural products are herbal medicines we lack somehow the quality so what are the things to be done and what are major so if we talk about in india so we have indian system of medicine in indian system of medicine we have ayurveda yoga naturopathy and yunani siddha so that is in fact known as asu and h medicines in uh, dnc act so that is ayurveda siddha yunani and homeopathy medicines okay so we'll take just one example of suppose that yunani system of medicine similar to ayurveda or anything we have um, their quality of their crude drugs mentioned in pharmacopoeia and that pharmacopoeia that is known as part 1 in part 1 usually whether it is ayurveda or yunani system of medicine or siddha so in part 1 what we discuss we discuss the quality of crude drugs or single drugs okay then we have uh, so like this there are various monographs in part 1 then we have part 2 in part 2 we discuss the formulations of uh, of that system so pharmacopoeia part 2 contains monographs that is quality of the formulations then we have formularies formularies are mentioned with the formulations only not with the quality but how to prepare the formulation and what are their effects and like that so so the approximately yeah like about 1200 formulations are mentioned in yunani system similarly in ayurveda and other systems as well so if we talk about format of quality in ayush or in even um, who so this looks like this like pharmacopoeia title definition microscopic microscopic identity purity tlc and uh, many of the things even important formulations as well so if we discuss about um, this so in uh, even pharmacopoeia how we and set the limit like if we talk about fire and foreign matter eh? so it's not uh, written uh, uh, very properly in the pharmacopoeia or even we are not very stringent to set a limit of even foreign matter sometimes it is written 10% 12% 13% percent like that okay so but uh, that should not be acceptable even uh, if we talk about the ash value ash value so this should be also very properly and how we set a limit what we do in fact uh, when the people are uh, working on preparation of monograph they are supposed to take uh, yeah this uh, three samples of any of the plant material and uh, analyze in tripl- triplicate that means we suppose that foreign matter our ash value we are doing then uh, we are uh, analyzing a, a one sample in triplicate way uh, our foreign matter and then we have nine limits in fact three is to three that is nine so nine uh, values we have so what we do how we will get the limit so starting from the lower to upper Uh, so people uh, those uh, scientists who are working in i use they choose the one lower one and one is from the upper one and say that in between whatever is coming that is approved okay so like that that's how we set the limit and that's why we have the problems in the limits and uh, like in acid insoluble ash you can say see here uh, some people have reported 
like fennel hap people do not understand properly that uh, but whatever they are getting the results in their laboratory just they are reporting okay so maybe in some processing they may be wrong somewhere that's why they are getting this type of so like total ice is 12 percent but acid insoluble ice is 15 percent that should not be even more than five percent in the drugs so here you can see some other examples also i found some reports on uh, like um, a rasat if we call so this is prepared as a course extract of uh, this barberis aristata root but uh, some people have reported that water soluble extracted should not be more than uh, this uh, 32% but if the drug is prepared from uh, uh, by aqueous extract, then whole of the things should be soluble. So then, uh, if we talk about this um, thin layer chromatography, when the people are preparing the monographs, if like suppose that one is working for some pharmacological work, then they are first standardizing. So during standardization, they are doing uh, this type of things. So if we talk about um, this um, herbal drugs in IU system, usually we are using uh, this aqueous extract or juice or maximum of hydroalcoholic extract. But uh, here, like if we talk about ISAP goal, Isab goal, uh, we, I have found that uh, sub goal is used because of presence of mucilages and uh, yeah, polysaccharides in them. So I have seen that pupils uh, uh, used uh, TLC of Isab goal for the identification, but they use the uh, like petroleum ether extract of Isab goal and then uh, run the TLC in the benzene and detected with nanhydrin. Nanhydrin is used for specifically for uh, amino acids. And but here, if petroleum ether, nothing is going to dissolve of amino acid in petroleum ether. And similarly, if you run that thing in the benzene, nothing will come out. Then TLC of silk, if we talk about silk, is used because of of in, in various systems and this is containing you know that this is a protein but if you extract this in petroleum ether and run it in benzene and detect in iodine then what it is going to tell this is uh, very ambiguous in fact then if we talk about even formulations of a traditional system similarly these are also having this type of uh, format for standardization when people are standardizing these things then um, sometimes even i have seen that when people are making decoction of uh, uh, and preparing some formulations, preparing decoctions of the raw material, of the powdered material, and then putting it into some sugar uh, syrup or something like that. Then even syrup they are going to for the microscopy that do not contain any of the that uh, plant material just extract. Okay, so and then if we talk about TLC thin layer chromatography of formulations. So if we would prepare a decoction in water and then uh, put some sugar and that's what is syrup. So there are various different types of syrupy formulations are used in Ayurveda and Yunani system. And uh, if you run their, uh, want to run their TLC, so you are supposed to dissolve in some solvent okay but if you are going to dissolve and and remove the sugar before running the tlc but if you are going to dissolve in petroleum ether or in chloroform if you are going to put nothing you can get except the colorant okay if you add it to that so doing TLC of uh, syrups or sugar-based formulations in petroleum ether and in chloroform extract is 
is um, in fact of no use and that not going to give any information. Similarly, we are talking talking about um, yes, ash value. So if you have prepared decoction, means each and everything was soluble in water and uh, used for the preparation of syrups, then uh, in syrup, syrup is composed of sugars and that also contains, if we talk about that extract, extract um, many of the poop, poop portion if you prepare the decoction by using hot uh, water so so protein is not going to come Wa and then uh, carbohydrate will come many of the phenols will come many of the tannins and saponins will come glycosides will come so like maximum of it is organic very little of the salts will come, very little of the salts will come. So if you want to produce ash of syrup or any sherbet, then you are getting very small amount of ash, even 0.1% like that. Okay. So because um, very less of uh, the salts are available, uh, but it does not contain silica, so there should not be any acid insoluble ash. Uh, so, but uh, I have seen in the many reports, people are reporting the acid insoluble ash of these, these syrups and sugar based formulations as well. Then, uh, similarly, if you are preparing a syrup and uh, making a decoc um, after making the decoction of some plant material, then uh, that sugar based formulation, if you dissolve in alcohol and uh, put uh, to write the alcohol soluble extractives as a part of a standardizing measure of pharmacopoeia then uh, I, I have seen somewhere that in some uh, references that it is written the alcohol soluble extractive should not be less than 90 percent and uh, if we talk about sugar even sugar is if it is sugar based formulation, only 40% of the sugar is soluble in alcohol, and the rest, uh, uh, um, the part which is extract very so, so you cannot write like 90%, so maximum of the 40%, 45% of the alcohol soluble extractive. So, before uh, writing, after doing the experiment, before writing the result, things should be thought about that whether this is right or wrong then must with the pharmacopoeia standards then only it should be published then we have water soluble extractive like if you have sugar based syrup formulation so in uh, by making decoction then each and everything is soluble so you we cannot write that only 13 percent uh, water soluble extractive are like 78 percent of water soluble extractive because each and everything is soluble in the water so like that then uh, we have many of the sugars and uh, reducing and non-reducing sugars and uh, then in uh, present in the formulation so suppose that a syrup contains uh, 15, uh, like like uh, syrup contains 70% of the sugar usually, 65 to 70%. So when uh, we are writing in the results again, in many of the reports published in the journals, I have seen that they contain fund, uh, that uh, not reducing sugar, 15%, not reducing sugar, 7%, something like that, so 19, 20. But whole of the things should come out at least at least 60 percent if not 70 because cigarettes you know syrup is composed of like that so many of the problems even uh, even i will show you some example here see one paper is uh, hexane extract okay so uh, the authors are using hexane extract and uh, of various plants they have tested and showing in hexane the presence of carbohydrate everywhere you can see. Huh? So carbohydrate cannot be present in hexane. So then again see, uh, if it is a plant material and you are making, a, making an aqueous extract, 
it is supposed if any of the plant material leaf stem root fruit flower or any part of that all parts should contain carbohydrate but here you can see that authors are reporting that aquose extract is negative with the carbohydrate so many of the things like this so other another report like uh, here total ash is 9.8% but water soluble ash is 13% again acid insoluble ash is 5 point so this is uh, you can see it should not be nothing should be more than like uh, total ash so many many of the this type of reports are there and this is because um, students and uh, do not un understand it properly and teachers could not check it before communicating the manuscript then uh, so what is the differences between um, like uh, uh, with the perspective of a pharmacognosist in uh, traditional Indian medicine or in fact a traditional medicine and with the modern, what is uh, with respect to pharmacognosis See here, if uh, this is uh, some tablet of sualine and some tablet of safi that uh, I took some example from Hamidar. This is composed. This is a syrup, and this is a, a tablet, and composed of these these things. Okay, so if we talk about their quality control, so in um, traditional system we are doing it like this. Okay, how we can analyze the anal maximum? What we do in traditional system total protein, total carbohydrate, total phenol or whatever, and like, like major groups we do. Okay. So that's what we do in the quality control of these things, traditional formulations in traditional system. If we talk about uh, this uh, paracetamol, okay. So paracetamol 500 milligram like tablet, so it contains only 500 milligram of paracetamol, you know, okay. Then uh, if we analyze them, if we analyze them for their quality control, so this is going to give you one peak like this. Here you can see if you can see me, my arrow, okay. So similarly, if we take any of the traditional medicine, I took just one Garcinia. Okay, so because it is composed of just one, but our formulations are composed of many of the components. So I am talking about just Garcinia. Here you can see number of components are present in just one extract of Garcinia. So if we are going to take many of the plants in one formulation, so it may be five times or six times of this. Okay. So, and how we are preparing, you know, okay, how we are preparing. So, if we are preparing this thing like uh, sualine, so we are taking mulberry, licorice, adetoda, osimum, like that. Although, suppose that we have to make a 500, uh, 500 tablet, so we multiply its content with the 500 and then made the tablet accordingly, okay? Similarly, if we want to uh, the tablet of 500 milligram of uh, paracetamol, then we take 500 milligram, multiply by 500, and whatever the weight is coming, total T took that weight for making 500 tablet, okay? But what happens after that? After making the tablet, what is the quality? For in checking the paracetamol, we check that whether it contains 500 milligram of paracetamol or not. Okay. Then we find out if it contains not less than 490 milligram plus minus 2%. Okay. Not less than 490 milligram and not more than uh, 510 milligram of paracetamol, then it passes the barrier and goes into the market, okay? And uh, that means we check its presence, we analyze its, its presence. If it is equivalent to 500 milligram, so it is passed. But in case of traditional medicine, what we do, 
we mix whole of the thing similar to that we prepare whole of the tablet similar to that paracetamol tablet but after preparation of tablet we could not we could not analyze that how much amount of liquor is added to the or osimum or mulberry whether the desired amount is present in that or not okay so that we could not do if we can do in that way if we can analyze each and every constituent and ensure its presence of desired quantity that then it will be completely standardized hmm? so if we can make a formulation in which we can analyze each and every component of that formulation and qualitatively as well as quantitatively then it is a standardized formulation and it is completely equivalent to the all modern formulations okay but uh, till date uh, it is very tough since we have hundreds of components in traditional formulation so it is very tough to analyze each and every component but right now we have very high resolution mass spectrometers okay and uh, very sophisticated hyphenated techniques by uh, high resolution nmr and high resolution mass spectrometers and by using those high resolution mass spectrometers and nmrs we can analyze not hundreds not 300 not even thousands of components even in picogram or less than that if they are present in our formulations we can we can analyze them for their quality and their we can even check their quantity okay so if we can do that then what will happen our all traditional formulations will be modernized and will be equivalent to our modern formulations we can understand we can know each and every component even if it is present in very small or smallest quantity even in 0.00001 percent as if it is present there then only then uh, also we can identify and then also we can uh, analyze so analyzing the components of traditional formulations in such a way is nothing but metabolomics and this technique is known as metabolomic profiling so so metabolomics is analyzing of complete set of metabolites present in in a, in a formulation or in one extract so by utilizing metabolomic profiling we can check the complete quality of our of our traditional formulations and make them make them we can help in making them global so there are various methods of so like if we see uh, this uh, botanical sara ayush medicines how these are composed of either these are drug powders juices extracts distillates or sometimes then uh, this is so depending on the type of type of things we are using in making suppose that we are using aqueous extract so we, we know what aqueous extract can contains then how we can analyze we sometimes we are using fixed oil or volatile oils you know what volatile oils are what is their chemistry we can use the techniques in, in that way similarly also there are different type of formulations you can say like vati churna then arc asava arista lepa so many of the so their chemistry is dependent on their type of formulation or type of extract or type of yeah, yeah the botanicals we are using so the, the their chemistry is dependent on that on the basis of their chemistry we can use like if this is volatile oil we can use the gcms if if it is like a uh, medium polar we can use lcms so if uh, if fixed dial we can use this uh, so many of these chemistry of these materials are based on 
on, on the type of metabol uh, type of botanicals we are using and similarly we can choose the technique for their analysis and for to analyze so metabolomics based identification how we do in our laboratory see so all those things many of the data i will show in the slide all this is uh, generated in my laboratory and uh, many of them are published and uh, yeah so 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 see here if we talk about this metabolomics so this is one of uh, so many of them are part of uh, that uh, many of the projects that uh, students uh, completed in my laboratory so each and every slide will be one project like this uh, so here you can see just one gta monosperma that is used in jharkhand for diabetes and in uh, yeah we came to know about this that decoction of this is used and icmr in fact contacted me for the development of some uh, uh, this quality standards and to check whether it is useful or not whether it is safe or not many of the things be proposed like this so how we propose that we take, we will took the aquas extract of vitia monosperma flower and check its toxicity if we found that if it is safe then we will uh, go for the in vitro anti diabetic activity if we found something then we will go for the fractionation then we will do the fractionation in two way one is polarity uh, wise and second is metabolized wise we will uh, so fractionate in eight fractions and all those eight fractions will be tested again for the in vitro activity and from in vitro we will find out the best in active fraction and those best in vitro active fractions will be tested in in vivo then we will do for we found that one of the fraction it was vitanol fraction it was the best active then we did some metabolomic profiling how we did it okay we did high resolution mass spectrometry for that and um, analyze all the uh, this metabolites present in them i will show you all okay then uh, and find out how many metabolites are present in this uh, butanol fraction then uh, we did uh, we, we introduced it into the rats and got the bloods and in the blood we analyzed that out of total metabolite how many of them are bioavailable then we did some in vitro testing of that also in yeast cell model that in yeast cell also we can check uh, that whether these are present in uh, in ex vivo and uh, like uh, in the cell so that we can check whether what whatever we got bioavailable that should be present in the yeast cell then we can do what 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 uh, has done like uh, in uh, i will show you like if there are 30 metabolites in total metabolites out of 30 suppose that only 15 were bioavailable and then those 15 we confirmed with the yeast cell model okay then again we have found uh, some of the ghost molecule present in the plasma which were not present in the original but are present in the plasma so we found we we were uh, we were supposed to find from where they came so they came because of gut microbiota or hepatic biotransformation so we did the uh, gut microbiota biotransformation in the laboratory we do did that the hepatic biotransformation in uh, in vitro condition and analyzed and proved that which one is uh, from gut microbiota and which one is from hepatic so out of that suppose that out of 30 so out of 30 15 were bioavailable five six were ghost molecules so total suppose that 23 mm. so total out of 23 uh, molecule 15 is coming directly six is ghost molecule coming from by microbiota and hepatic so total bioavailable metabolites whatever we have we found the major bioavailable metabolites which is having more than one percent of area and then we did 
some in silico screening of them so in silico screening we find out that which one is going to interfere with the uh, this uh, uh, diabetic enzymes the proteins of uh, uh, glucose metabolism and found some of them are interfering so out of that uh, total 23 bio available only 5 6 were interfering here we targeted those five six and did pharmacokinetic analysis and developed so each and every metabolite we targeted and analyzed so like that so beauty monosperma how we did the standardization then like um, hplc analysis and then lcms analysis and then lcms analysis after introduction uh, yeah administration in the uh, animals and then the met major metabolites what was that we obtained and then what we obtained by yeast cell metabolomics so similar metabolites we obtained from yeast cell so this is the summary of that total number of metabolites and then here you can see different type of metabolites present in in retinal fraction then here you can see total 27 metabolites were present in butanol the fraction then 15 out of 27 were bioavailable out of 27 12 were not bioavailable whereas here we found some ghost molecule six ghost molecule that means here 21 is bioavailable and 12 is not those six come from gut microbiota so like that whole of the metabolites we identified then we did docking and then we find out then further we confirmed it with in vitro testing using bioautography then we did the pk analysis and then proposed the mechanism is still it was published in frontiers in food and chemical toxicity so like that we are doing the metabolomic profiling in our laboratory similarly we did it for chicorium in tibus but my whole of the data we cannot do it uh, here because it is just patented Uh, from my laboratory that is for metabolic disorders and uh, what we found here in nutshell i want to tell to you that this is useful in metabolic disorders and uh, but uh, what it did like uh, if you in metabolic disorders what happens that uh, saturated fatty acids concentration increases in plasma where it is going to decrease the uh, concentration of saturated fatty acid and increase the unsaturated fatty acids useful okay so like that it did similarly we did metabolomic profiling like metabolic profiling if we are talking about doing the metabolomic profiling a very complex drug is still very tough for us because still we are in india and lack all the facilities eh? but have at least some so we target the things which we can do easily in our laboratory so if we talk about some distillates which are our aromatic waters used in traditional system so few of them are ke maho and are ke kasni are very common used for fatty liver or liver disorders and very common in urinary system and other systems as well so we took that distillates and analyze their constituents it was observed that it contains 56 constituent out of them them 38 is bioavailable we did their analysis also and with the hepatic enzymes many with with arkacasni similarly hmm? then we did uh, something for uh, like uh, kerika papaya is used in dengue fever so we did it also and it's a bioactive fraction it uh, the dose of it comes to 2.5 g the extract or cosmic extract of it uh, per day but if you uh, we did find out the best active fraction out of that and that reduced its dose about 1/4 and to 150 yeah and uh, then analyzed all those components present in that and by metabolomic profiling find it contain some phenolic constituents 
those also be analyzed did their pk analysis and many other things biology and all those things and since it is uh, uh, this is a presentation of uh, quality control that's why we are dealing with the analysis here only okay then we have uh, like some formulations of composed of mccoy used for liver disorders and some specific composition is used of extract is used in traditional system we found that those contains that steroid moieties do both as a glycoside as well as a glycone and all those reported to possess the activity and uh, then uh, we analyze all those glycosides and a glycoside egg like on simultaneously because it's it's uh, very tough to analyze simultaneously glycosides and egg like on developed method and this is also published in good journal we developed many of the mon monographs in our laboratory for uh, pharmacopeia and uh, for ayush and still we are working for united state pharmacopeia so many of them so like it's just i'm showing some HPTLC or TLC pattern of them, you can see of Cinnamomum, Zilanicum, Tamala, and many, many, uh, approximately 70 or more than that. Uh, this uh, the monographs were developed in uh, my laboratory. Okay. Some cardioprotective formulations which are used in traditional system, it is approximately, I have uh, listed out, it's 63. plants which are used very commonly uh, in uh, development in uh, cardio protective formulations in traditional system out of all them only few like khamira abrasion in unani system and khamira uh, marwarida fi unani system as of vast use and uh, of vast public interest and having good activity so i targeted not only those things but many of the formulas many of the plants which are very common and then which has been reported for some cardio protective activity then we did the activity and find out that amomum sugulatum uh, bigger cardamom is having the best cardio protective protection protect, uh, activity among all the reported this uh, plants we analyzed them and their formulations using the markers using hplc hptlc lcms and gcms even you can see in everything many of the markers i am not going to tell detail them similarly jetamancy saffron gorago many of the things are which are used then one of uh, tablet gol is used that contains that uh, muleti and uh, some other components of muleti earlier was analyzed with the presence of glycerin we started with the glabridin earlier it was reported unstable but we have reported now as a stable uh, yeah, flavonoid present in uh, formulations of glycerin or glabra and this can be used for quality control then we are talking about that khamira operation and khamira marwarid which are much used in in for cardio protection and uh, we developed since it was sugar based we developed its capsule when we developed its capsule it comes uh, that a question comes whether these are if these are even biologically equivalent whether these are chemically equivalent or not we did all those analysis to prove our chemical equivalency using lcms gcms and many other sophisticated method but here i am showing you only the this uh, thing that i can show you on tlc plate thin layer chromatography so here you can see the spot of one dose of yeah capsule and here is one dose of of the traditional formulation and you can see how they are looks chemically chemically equivalent it is another amira and then some formulations are used in traditional system for urolithiasis kidney stone is the major problem and that one formulation ever patthar phodi in the name of used in traditional system and that is 8 gram in 8 gram of the dose but uh, we developed its uh, 800 milligram 
tablet and because taking it eight gram in the morning and evening it's a very tough job and uh, it looks like a dinner and uh, yeah breakfast for older people and usually that problems occurs in the older people so let uh, we develop it's a tablet and again prove it's a biology clinical trial and many other things and uh, then uh, Uh, even prove the chemical equivalency as well analyze many of their components then we develop some adjuvant uh, of uh, for chemotherapy and that is from picorrhiza kirova and from bacopa monary we found that terpenoidal rich fraction of these uh, plants are having uh, the anti cancer activity and similar to the standards and then now uh, we analyze the many of the terpenoid simultaneously in there in picorrhiza crua as well as and 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 bacopa monary and all those terpenoids then um, analyze them for their biology here also you can see see this kalpan uh, mein survival curve here can you can see that this is the toxicant and this is the drug of uh, uh, like btm uh, this uh, uh, tb in the bacopa monary and this is the five fluorouracil so if we combine them this is uh, going to have somewhere here and this is equal into five fluorouracil so that's what is adjuvant that we developed here i'm showing only that uh, single part here you can see we developed the adjuvant similarly with the boswellia serrata part for uh, cytotoxicellular carcinoma and this is also showing good activity here you can see then um, some uh, hptlc bioautographic analysis you know this is used in uh, um, like um, very much uh, use of vgr34 in anti diabetic for anti diabetic but still it is questionable and uh, but we were supposed to uh, do some work on that and find out some if it is having some anti diabetic compounds okay and what is their content what is their metabolic profiling but uh, in the public interest but not free okay so each and everything on the paid basis from the company or the from the ayush council so we analyze some of the anti uh, that uh, anti diabetic component from that similarly we analyze some anti diabetic components by using bioautography from citrullus colocynthus and uh, similarly from tinospora cardifolia tinosporin and then we identified like one anti cancer a uh, fraction we developed from tylofora indica we analyzed its complete profile that shows this 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 component and uh, then one you know trifala formulation you know well i think uh, this is uh, from uh, unani system if we talk then it contains itrifal so itrifal is nothing but trifala contains all those uh, but sugar based formulation if we talk about this uh, uh, amla and harra bahra then all those contains phenols and flavonoids what are the phenols and flavonoids you know those so we can target them for analysis and that's how we can analyze the quality of these uh, by hplc hptlc or by lcms like that so we did free gallic acid quercetin and so free and total uh, that means free total and glycosylated all those uh, we analyzed in this formulation for their quality control and we can check their uh, stability as well then uh, still we did some uh, some some analysis in one of the ayush formulation recently we did so we analyzed that composed of 10 components we analyzed about 14 components in that out of 10 uh, plants we analyzed 14 components and uh, but we 
cannot show here the formulation then stability so that's how we do the quality control we can do the quality control using multi marker analysis using metabolomic profiling and that will give a uh, aid to to modernization of our traditional system similarly uh, stability testing if we are talking about it's important out of four parameters are four checks of who gout guidelines and standardization and quality control of herbal medicine stability is one of them so stability and shelf life so what is stability and shelf life i don't think that i am going to tell you the definition you all know and uh, but some general information i just put it down here or uh, so but in general means it is the uh, stability the product is stable or up to their shelf life that means it is suitable for the consumption during this time of storage and that's what it is and if there is nothing is mentioned about this storage so that means we can store that product below 30 degree centigrade are at room temperature then if we talk about um, factors affecting you know all those storage condition moisture interaction environmental factors microorganisms and these things then um, affect the stability and then problems associated with the because um, environmental condition instability in fact uh, complex uh, uh, and variability complexity and variability is the in the top of that and uh, that is uh, going to associate with the stability of herbal drugs how we can come up by determining physical parameter impurity profile non biased identification and quantification of metabolites that means it's very smaller uh, uh, metabolites and uh, and uh, in metabolites in higher concentration all should be analyzed and identified and in doing, putting it in controlled conditions then um, Uh, many of the things uh, there are challenges are instability para instability indicating methods that like methods should be validated and color order taste and physical and other parameters should be included so many of the so then uh, uh, in ac drugs what is um, that that uh, consider is stable if there is no significant change that's in, important okay so what is the no significant what is what is the significant change and uh, uh, by which we can say that the compound or drug or formulation is unstable if we test it for the marker if we test it for the marker and marker shows variability plus minus 20% that means then then it is unstable okay and uh, are otherwise if we are talking about active component if the marker itself is active component then it should be not uh, more than plus minus 15% okay so like that then uh, the changes okay are otherwise there should not be new spot in the tlc or there should not be this disappearance of any spot in the tlc with respect to the control there should not be change in uh, more than 25% in the physical chemical parameters are uh, uh, then and there should not be any change in like color order taste face separation cracking hardness like those things should not be changed of our formulation then only we can say this is acceptable so then frequency also we are testing accessibility in two uh, like uh, two ways uh, one is uh, real time stability and another is accelerated if we are talking about real time or otherwise long term stability so for long term stability we are doing first it on six monthly basis for two years uh, and then after that annual basis up to the claim and or otherwise if we are doing it for accelerated we are doing it up to like 3 months basis and uh, then uh, 
like that but uh, here in testing of um, like long term or in uh, uh short term sometimes we are also doing bracketing or matrix max uh, matrixing how we are doing matrixing or bracketing it's like that we are supposed to test five uh, parameters so we are not going to test all the parameters only few parameters like color or the taste and some basic physical parameters be tested in mid beam but at least up to three we have times so we test uh, complete parameters suppose that there are three check six uh, checkpoints to test so out of six checkpoints we can test only three points uh, for all the parameters but all other parameters uh, only only physical chemical parameters should be just in the rest so like that we are bracketing and matrixing to we also like these are storage condition for accelerated and long term analysis containers and closures need also be tested okay so these are if we talk about sugar based formulation these are parameters to be tested if this is non sugar based remove that sugar content so like that Uh, this ph microbial growth moisture content analytical techniques extractive yields foreign matter equals so like this things should be tested at different time intervals as per the schedule then various modern techniques around now we are using to get a stability done on the basis of on the basis of active component that's what is the need of the day and uh, to make it acceptable throughout the globe so here it is like like uh, if it is accelerated stability doing it at 3 months then 6 month and 3 month uh, yeah, like the 9 month like that okay so up to 6 month we are doing a stability testing and then then in uh, at long term uh, stability here we are doing it now okay up to the claim then what this is the you can see like what are the things that we are supposed to test and uh, and what are their uh, limits like average weight and if it is like tablet weight thickness content percent by weight in gram sc of the marker compound your habit in plus minus 20 percent so like that tlc fingerprint and then microbes and many things okay so if we talk about this uh, there are various formulations in which in in drug and cosmetic act we already have uh, mentioned that their shelf life what is that you can see that uh, uh, extracted oils one to two years and then like sugar based formulation five years then tablets uh, and like one year so similarly all those formulations are mentioned i have given some example of formulations which uh, uh, we did in our laboratory because there is one uh, i told you the distillate so since distillate we are uh, preparing by uh, making uh, distillate of that oil and storing of that oil is is stuff because that contain the volatile oil that may contains uh, uh that uh, may get uh, evaporated on storage so stability of distillates were very important that's why we, i am showing you some of the uh, stability of distillates and this is also a part of uh, one major project from the ayush and to check their stability of the various uh, this distillates uh, reported in pharmacopias so like here we took the major components we analyzed with the gcms and we took uh, in analysis as a total complete analyze their uh, antioxidant components also present in them and then these are the components uh, which are major components present in these in distillates and then with the uh, this uh, degradation kinetics or ines equation we find out uh, their um, half life okay so this so like uh, distillates of uh, gajar and arkenana and arkebadi and so like that we did stability testing and uh, accelerated stability analysis and then we did uh, this thing so thank you very much i think i took a uh, long time and uh, Uh, in uh, present
presentation because it was too much to present to you um, before you the stability and uh, so now i invite you all for submitting of the manuscripts in uh, in frontier some pharmacology if you have some good papers still you can submit the complete paper on the website of the frontiers in pharmacology we are editing with polak mukherjee and uh, dr katiar and dr kudron and uh, thank you very much thank you dr pramod and uh, thank you kli society for inviting me here again and here for uh, uh, presenting uh, this uh, work on uh, tl uh, this uh, drug discovery uh, especially the traditional medicines and uh, all other aspects of their its quality control profiles uh, of indian system of medicine so i request uh, now the participants so uh, to interact with our speaker so for further uh, to go ahead with so how to go ahead with all those uh, aspects of uh, mm -hmm. the quality control profiles of these all these drugs so anybody is interested to interact or uh, shall we close it please uh, unmute yourself then uh, then please stop anita what sir anita is there any doubt mm -hmm. ट for that any analytical standards they are going to uh, they are going to put on that or not sir regarding the uh, most of the standards observed, uh, i observed only the carbohydrate value and uh, lipid content uh, like that only they are giving but uh, important composition active ingredient uh, analytical uh, or uh, active ingredient how much composition related to that we did, i didn't see any uh, labels regarding that what about uh, your opinion on that sir? in in monographs yeah in monographs yeah in fact um, uh, to make it easy and for uh, making uh, all those things acceptable to many of the companies since there are hundreds of thousands of companies are there and uh, who are making these traditional formulations so we make them in the form of like if we make it compulsory to analyze if any formulation is composed of like uh, glyceriza so they should if we make it compulsory that they should analyze that uh, uh, this um, um, glyceric acid or glabridine in that they cannot uh, they, they cannot do it because they don't have those sophisticated techniques so that's why it is uh, just uh, uh, very basic uh, parameters which has been included in uh, standardization and in the far in, uh, in that uh, formats of uh, pharmacopias so that each and every uh, smaller uh, companies can uh, prepare and sell their products yeah okay sir thank you sir thank you very much so uh, dr said uh, ahmed uh, for the wonderful uh, talk on uh, all these aspects of uh, thing and uh, it was a good experience that you had uh, shown your bioactive natural product laboratory also 
in your slides so i hope uh, in future we will continue with you for further uh, collaborations then further uh, uh, upgradation of knowledge for the teachers especially in this particular area thank you very much once again and have a nice time thank you thank you dr pramod thank you very much if anyone wants to ask any more question otherwise uh, we can leave the meeting